Hey, hello, everybody. This is Purge bringing you guys Navi versus Next KZ. This is for the Gosu League. We're watching a set of twos. It's going to be two games between these teams. And this is Division 1, by the way. Navi is way behind in terms of how many games that they've played so far this month. And they're going to be starting back up again. So, two games today for two sets today for Navi, actually. This set is going to be versus Next KZ. And the set after immediately is going to be versus Shakira, I believe. So, four games for Navi to play in the Gosu League today. They've only played two matches so far, but they've gotten two O's for both of them. Now, um, the competition that they're going to be dealing with is Maus, I believe. Uh, Maus did a great job playing yesterday. They ended up getting a 2-0 uh, win against Kaipi, I think, was that? Or I believe it was. I think it was Kaipi. Kaipi played an excellent game, but I think Maus was able to 2-0 them, I believe. And I'm going to go check that out right now at GhostGamers.net. First round bans, we see a Dark Seer, a Rubik, as well as an Enchantress and a Chen. So a lot of junglers banned from Next KZ. They do not want to deal with puppies jungling. So I haven't seen Navi pl play that style that often recently. So maybe they won't even need to do that, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Division 1, we have Navi sitting at 4 points with 2 wins. Uh, Kaipi is sitting at 3 wins and 1 draw. And Maus is actually... I'm sorry, did... Am I confused? No, I thought Maus won at least one game yesterday. Maybe they threw them both. I can't remember. Was it a 2-0? Maybe I'm crazy. Let me look at the up or the uh, recent results. Kaipi. Okay, so Kaipi 2-0'd Maus. Uh, sorry, it was the other way around. My bad. Kaipi 2-0'd Maus, and that puts them up to three wins and one draw. So Kaipi currently, currently lead with four games played at seven points. So if Navi wants to match them, they have to win at least three out of the four games today to be on equal footings with Kaipi. In second place right now is Gamers League Int, who's at three wins and one loss. That's four games played for them, and they're at six points. They're one point behind Kaipi. So, um, that is the standings. That is what's going on, guys. Fantastic stuff. All right, so let's track first pick from next KZ. That'll be their support hero, most likely uh, in a dual lane supporting a hard carry. I'm expecting Jakiro's going to get drafted by uh, Navi, of course. Um, Jakiro, a hero that is extremely appreciated now in the Dota scene, and even in pretty early M uh, AMAs, sorry, Dendi was saying that he thought Jakiro was a little undervalued in some ways, but his disables are so much more reliable now, and now you can kind of do whatever you want to him with him. You can use Dual Breath, you can use Ice Path, you can use Liquid Fire if you really want to as well. I mean, just really gives him a lot more options now as a hero. Um, Ice Path buffed, does damage, the stun is reliable, it's sexy, you can put him in a dual lane, you can put him in a trial lane, you can pretty much put him anywhere, and his strength gain is really good for a support hero. So, it's going to be a Jakiro Invoker, I haven't seen an Invoker on Navi in quite a while, but we will be seeing Dendi's Invoker, so hope you guys are excited for that. It's actually been a very long time, I don't think Navi has regularly drafted Invoker for quite a while, there was a period of time where Invoker was the go-to for Dendi, when he started playing the Exhort Invoker right before Exhort Invoker got buffed. And uh, Wex Quas Invoker got nerfed. Dendi ahead of the curve, of course. But um, Invoker this game, I assume it will be Dendi, of course. I don't think I've seen any of them, uh, any of the other players on their team playing Invoker. So, Barrator, of course, is drafted next from next KZ. That'll give at least them a really strong solo mid hero. He's not the best against Invoker because Invoker can just cast Cold Snap and run under tower, and then Barrator gets disabled so often that it's very hard to get kills. But um, that'll be there. That's going to be an option for Dendi if he worries about getting dove on. Another problem is that Batrider can really increase the damage that he does to creeps by a massive amount using Sticky Napalm, which means that it's going to be very tough for Dendi to actually deny any creeps. Batrider is usually going to be able to win his lane in terms of last hitting just because of the power of Sticky Napalm. And you also have to deal with the annoyance of that skill, which reduces your turn radius and makes you extremely slow yourself. So... It's gonna not going to be an easy lane for Dendi by any means. Batrider, one of the most popular hard carries, or one of the most popular solo mids in the game right now. So Now uh, we see Chaos Knight for the last pick out of next KZ. That'll be their dual lane. Next, or Chaos Knight, Leshrac is what they want to lane. And Navi actually is going to draft a Naga Siren. So we're going to have Naga Siren, Jakiro, and Voker. So they can set up possible combos with this. We're going to see a Wisp ban in the second round next, and Broodmother as well. Next KZ doesn't want to deal with Light of Heavens. Broodmother, understandable. Very, very good Broodmother player. One of the best in the world. We see an Enigma ban next, out of next KZ. Enigma, of course, would give them really good team fight. Uh, Navi, that is. They can use Naga Siren to set up the ulti, and then walk in the Enigma, drop the ulti down. Tidator's ban next from Navi. They don't want to fight with that at all. And Disruptor as well. Another hero that combos with Naga very well. It's pretty much Disruptor as well as Enigma right now that are that combo the best with Naga, I believe, um, out of all of the other heroes. And now Darkseer is not bad either, but his vacuum doesn't work through the ult the sleep anymore, which is a very nice nerf to it. But 
even still, Darkseer is still a very, very good hero, especially against a, a hero like Cast. Now we see a Venomancer ban actually next. That means Nabi wants to try to prevent some of the push, as well as the really strong tri-lane from next KZ. It's one of the strongest tri-lanes in the game, Leshrac, Venomancer, Chaos Knight. Really, really scary. The only downside is that Chaos Knight actually runs out of mana pretty fast. And if he does run out of mana, then who? what's the big deal, you know? Runs out of mana, can't stun anymore. Has to use clarity potions or a magic stick or something like that to really get his mana pool up to be able to disable again. So... We're in the second round of picking. There's lots of time left on the clock for next KZ. They have about a minute before they have to make a decision. Let's see if they squeak out here. They have a mid. They have a dual lane of Chaos Knight Leshrac. So they either need a long lane, or they need to do an aggressive tri lane, or they need to grab a jungler and a long lane. So I expect to see them doing a long lane. Um, it's most likely going to be a Naga Siren Jakiro. It might actually be, maybe it'll be a Naga Jakiro dual mid. Who knows? It could be something weird like that because... Um, Net, very, very good against Bat Ritter. It stops him from moving completely, and he needs to move to score kills using Firefly. I, and then you, you get two Magic Wand charges, actually, per per one cast of Bat Ritter. I think that's it's definitely a possibility to see maybe a dual lane against Bat Ritter. Though he does have AoE damage, which things get scary. Once you start trying to kill him, you have to be careful not to die in the Firefly. Bounty Hunter's drafted, though, so that will be the long lane solo, one of the best long lanes in the game. We had uh, some issue on Maus yesterday, actually, executing the bounty hunter ganks around level 6, which didn't turn out so well for Maus, but it was mostly just nice play from Kaipi that did hold them from uh, getting those kills, so... I think Bounty Hunter is still very strong regardless. His ulti is fantastic. The gold advantage you get out of it is ridiculous. And when you have a Chaos Knight as well as a Bat Rider, the chase is excellent. The movement speed is what you need. And it's going to be a Night Stalker out of Navi. A hero that doesn't see that much play, occasional, occasionally thrown in. Um, maybe they're soul mid. And now they kind of have three farming heroes. So unless they do dual lanes or an aggressive tri lane, I'm not really sure how they're going to lane the Naga Siren. Um, it might be something weird like a support Naga Siren, but... More likely than not, I'm expecting her to get farm. So I'm guessing we'll see maybe an aggressive tri lane with Night Stalker and they'll throw a solo Naga mid or something. Pudge pick from next KZ. Very interesting. It's going to be a Pudge pick. So Pudge pick against Navi. Not very often where a team says, you know what, we're going to use Pudge against Navi. It's like, what? Uh, you're going to use Pudge against Navi? I thought Navi uses Pudge against, against you, but not this game. Pudge this game. For next KZ, maybe a solo mid, solo mid Pudge, uh, Bat Rider safe lane, and Chaos Knight. I don't even know what they're doing, to be honest. Who's their second support hero? I am really... Wow, and a Clockwork Goblin. Very, very interesting game going on here. Clockwork has been buffed in terms of COGS. The... What else has been buffed? Um... Mostly just COGS. COGS duration has increased by a lot. Force Staff does not get you out of it anymore. Um, and if uh, very good against Barretter, though, maybe that's perhaps that's why they're using it. Because if Barretter goes for the dive, you just put the COGS down and bam, he gets pushed away. Nothing he can do about it. He's going to get mini stunned. The COGS last for five seconds. He's probably going to hit multiple COGS. And very interesting to see Clockwork drafted, though. I don't know if he's going to be a long lane, though. Light of Heaven is not drafted as here yet. I assume it's going to be Light of Heaven on the Clockwork, though. The problem with Clockwork is he needs to get EXP and some farm, preferably mostly EXP, just so he can hit 6 and actually be contributing to team fights. But if he is long lane solo, the last time I saw Clockwork played, he was just forced away. And he may be up against a hero like Pudge. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be like a Pudge support or something. I'm, I'm really confused, though, about some of these picks. But let's go over the players really fast here. Oh, uh, yeah. Oops, wrong one. But I remembered. There we go. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we're going to be watching Gosu League. This is game one. Next KZ versus Navi. For next KZ, we have Mantis playing the Bat Rider going for a fast bottle. We have Blue Stahil. Stali? Stali. Blue Stali playing the Chaos Knight. We have Equal on the Bounty Hunter. Stallcat is playing Lestrak. And Geodude is going to be playing Pudge. I think... I could have swore that they were pulling in somebody. I think this might be... Yeah, I believe they, they asked if they could have Funic. Funic was a support player for Empire, previously Dare, the previous Dare team, uh, but it's going to be Chaos Knight and Funic, I believe. I believe this is Funic, pretty sure. For the Dire team, this is Navi. We have Avost playing the Night Stalker. We're going to have Arzart playing Jakiro. Mid lane looks like it's going to be Puppy. I'm jungle, maybe? Ugh, Naga Siren, I guess. Mid lane is going to be Dendi playing Invoker, going for the old Wex Quas cape, I guess, and Light of Heaven, of course, playing Long Lane. Looks like he sent some rockets over. Try to figure out where the lanes are. He did spot somebody, and it was actually a Leshrac. I don't know if he caught that or not, but it's going to be Chaos Knight and Leshrac. I love how Funic is killing these trees. Very, very smart. 
Well, the reason he's doing this is because if any Observer Wards get placed between the trees, the trees are already, already going to be gone because of his Quellian Blade usage. So, very, very thoughtful play by Funnicure. And that's going to give them about 5 minutes in. Look at that. So, now if they place a Sentry or an Observer Ward in any of these spots, they're going to be able to be spotted. And he's just going to kill all of the trees here. Um, I guess they're going to do a lot of pulling, and this is going to help him do it, actually, by quite a bit. He's going to be able to pull this wave over here if he needs to, and that's going to completely kill the wave. A large camp... Um, I'm sorry, this is a medium camp, actually. A medium camp plus a large camp is a guaranteed kill rather than two mediums, so that'll work out nicely. Equals going to the high ground, going to be putting an Observer Ward stunned. Arzard actually has a DD. There's the ward being placed. And in about seven seconds, he can go, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Got the sentry already. Puppy's going to hit him a little bit. There's the net. He's going to get a couple hits. And actually, Ice Path as well is going to put him kind of low. He goes invisible for just a bit. Arzart wants to kill, but I don't think he's going to get him. Another sentry going down, but they don't have any follow-up disables. I don't really think that sentry is worth it. And equal does run out of the range. Can they catch it with the second sentry is the question. And they can see it. Wow, that is like the longest range sentry I've ever seen. Look at this thing. Right there and right there. I cannot believe that got spotted. That was the longest range sentry ever. They actually got kind of lucky with that second sentry place. I don't know if Puppy was actually playing ahead on that one. And oh, look at that. The first sentry. I don't know if he's be able to counter ward this one. Man. The second sentry being used to try to kill the bounty hunter and it ends up not working. First blood is I'm going to miss that. It's bot lane actually on clockwork. I was just geeking out about sentry wards and the gank is going to happen bottom. Sorry about that. So first blood, uh, bounty hunter, or clockwork, sorry, gets killed bottom. He's going to run back down there. He's got 285 gold in the bank. Looks like he's actually rushing bottle. And that's a support pudge. So pudge, chaos knight, leshrac, tri lane is what's happening. Very weird. Mid lane is mantis versus a dual lane. It's a night stalker, jakiro though. And top lane is dendi. Being well, Puppy ends up doing pulling, so Puppy doing some side pulling this game. He's still looking for the ward. There's a ping by Jakiro. He thinks he knows where it is, and it is over there, but I don't think he can grab it. So, rough stuff there. Light of Heaven only one last hit so far. The tri lane comes forward. Blue Stolly is going to have level 2 boots up and a Quillian Blade. Decent disables. Uh, and it's actually going to be a lightning on Leshrac, interesting. So a little bit of rocket harass, he's going to grab one last hit using his rocket there. It only does 80 damage, which is not the best, but it is good for last hitting. You can pick that up without too much difficulty. Equal in the top lane is now at one last hit. That's his first last hit, actually, starting things off. He is level 2, though, and Invoker is actually going to Exhort. So Dendi's going to Exhort Invoker. Pretty cool starting item. Built a little bit of base damage, some stats all around. They're actually going on Arzar. He's got four stacks. He's in a lot of trouble. We're going to have more Napalm stacks. Five now. Comes for the stun. He's going to get stunned, taking so much damage. And Arzar is going to go down. Lightning as well from Stallcat helps out. Hobos takes some damage and a nice kill on the mid lane. That was daytime, actually. And Arzar could see that one coming because he was on the high ground. But he was trying to contest the rune and it was not going to happen. Byrata takes the easy kill on the mid lane and picks off Arzar. So 0-2 for Navi right now. On the bright side, uh, you know, they're not even last hitting that well. Chaos Knight is at 17 last hits on the bot lane. He's doing by far the best with the free farm. Hobos as well as Dendi are doing okay. And then we have Barrett. Though pretty much everybody else, look at this side. There's like six heroes that have no last hits. Actually, Clockwork is not even doing that bad. Light Up Heaven at level 3 now on the bot lane. And he goes for Cogs plus two levels of Rocket Flare. Very smart. Um, the Cogs is going to do way more than Battery Salt is at this level because it's a 5-5 five, five duration disable. So this can actually, actually force out Pudge a little bit. Unless he does hook Clockwork from inside, of course, which could be a problem. But ours are going to trade hits with Mantis a little bit. Now he turns around and walks. Wow, his turn speed is ridiculous. Relatively. There's some nukes. Actually, he's going to take the hits. He goes invis, though. Nice invis usage from Mantis. A little pulling from the top lane. This puppy is doing a stack pull into the side camps. These are his creeps, so if they do get denied, it's a good thing, of course. Puppy trying to deny some EXP. He's actually taking a lot of damage here. He's got two more sentry wards, so they will be able to deny the bounty hunter. Pudge actually sh shifting mid now. Um, so Pudge sitting on the mid lane looking for hooks, I guess. Uh, they are pretty slow because of some sticky napalm. And Arzard actually skilling a little bit of everything. Liquid fire. He's got an ice path as well as a dual breath. And he was looking to try to catch Havost there. He's like really trying to catch Havost. Mantis is worried about losing his haste and He's going to grab it, though. There was no contesting from Host, and now Pudge sapping some soul mid EXP. That's actually really good to do as somebody goes to grab a rune, is that you shift a support into your lane. Because now all of the creeps that have died since Bat Ritter is gone has not gone to waste at all. Very, very important. Especially with a hero like Pudge who does need the EXP. Invoker's going to grab a kill on Bounty Hunter top. I uh, was with a Sentry Ward, I assume a Net Sentry, maybe? Or just a Sentry. I was Cold Snap plus, plus a uh, possible Sunstrike. And they actually did use two Sentries for this one. Sentry will now die forever. 
Mantis still getting last hits mid. Ten last hits for him. He's going to take some nukes from Havost. Havost being aggressive. Going to put him a little low. Jakira looking for disables, but nothing yet. Uh, one Dire Observer Ward is up as well. Light of Heaven on the bot lane, now level 4. And he does that Battery Assault, grabs some more last hits, and actually he does harass both guys with this. And Blue Stolly actually going for a bottle this game. A little different than we normally see Chaos Knights build sometimes. Usually they just go really heavy on strength and rely on their allies to get Arcane Boots to support their mana, but he's opting for bottle this game. So slightly more HP regen is the trade-off. There's the haste from Batrider as he runs away mid. Kind of trying to be aggressive here. That was a puppy gank as well. Did use some disables, but... Here comes the chase. He actually, is he really going for this kill? He's got a haste rune, but oh, he gets slowed though. Tiny, tiny mini stun. Arzar might be in trouble. Gets pushed back actually. Is Mantis really going to get this kill? I think he is. He's running circles around him. He grabs the kill. Pudge actually snagging the kill, but awesome plays from Mantis there. Very, very low HP, but able to make plays using a great flame break there and uh, pushing them outside. I mean, and that's the power of Barret, or one of those heroes that you should be terrified if they're much, much faster than you, and that's exactly what happened. Now, Light of Heaven's out of mana, so he's going to run back to base. He's going to shoot a rocket, actually, on Stalkat. We'll see if he can steal something. Nope, not going to be able to, and I don't know if he even got Stalkat. He's actually maxing Lightning first, so Lightning getting maxed first, one Edict, and one Split Earth. Now, they don't have very good uh, counter push, and I think that's why he's actually loving this up. Batrider are not the best counter push. Chaos Knight can't do it, Bounty Hunter can't do it, and Pudge can't do it either. So they don't have any spammable nukes at all, at all. so they're going to go for Lightning Storm. I guess that's why they're doing this, at least. There isn't that much push coming out of the Dire Team. Is that a Sun Strike on Pudge? Uh, yes, it was a Sun Strike on Pudge, actually, with some Disables. I'm just missing, like, every kill today. Damn. Sorry about that. TP coming top. This is going to be Chaos Knight coming in. Looking for disable. He's going to throw it on top of Dendi. Right clicks as Bat Rider comes in as well. There's the net, but a big ulti on Dendi. Holds him in place. More fire damage. And that is going to be the kill. Going after Puppy as well. Puppy not even close to six. And this does not look good for him. More Napalm stacks. Fireflies almost out, but that is it. Bounty Hunter snags the kill, and that puts him up to level five. Really, really nice gank there by Next KZ. I love how the TP started right when Bat Rider was right here. As soon as Bat Rider was in position, the TP came, and Bat Rider was able to disable, and that was it for Dendi. I mean, they were a little overextended, but that was just really, really nice play by them. Use an Ice Path to do slight damage here as we do reduce the attack speed of the tower, and towers actually just may go down mid. Oh, wow. Uh, Night Stalker was actually bugged, and I saw this last night in a pub game. Night Stalker without wings. Kind of creepy looking. Tower is going to get killed by Night Stalker. Nice play by Hovost. He's got 935 gold, a dual lane, so his EXP is slightly behind where we normally see at night, but it is nighttime now, so looking okay for him. And Clockwork actually going Arcane Boots this game. Not going to be going for a bottle. He is getting last hits here. He's got to worry a little bit about Stallcat, but since the Edict is only level 1, I wouldn't be too worried. Some diving is happening. One do breath as well. There's nighttime actually. They want to grab Bat Rider. There's the net. Going to keep him on the low ground. They need another nuke. Here comes the Sun Strike. He goes to the high ground though. One right click. Oh my god, 7 HP. I can't believe it. Lives with 7 HP. They're going to see a hook, actually. Arzart may be in trouble. I don't know if he did land the hook on Pudge or not, but here's another style from Arzart. He's going to be able to fight this again. He is not done yet. Hitting a couple of neutrals. Geodude might be in trouble. A little Riptide to force him back, as Leshrac actually might be the one out of position. Throws one Lightning. Cooldown on that spell. So low. And Arzart actually going for Max Ice Path first. So really getting the cooldown as low as possible and upping the duration. Up to 2.2 seconds of stun. Very good disable. Dual Breath by itself is going to do really weak damage as a result. Only about 100 damage. But the movement and attack speed slow is still going to be there. And largely he's going to be focusing on just being really, really cost efficient in terms of mana. There's now Phase Boots on Bounty Hunter. Dendi actually picks up a Null Talisman. A build that we haven't seen before. At least on an Invoker. I assume this is not going to be a Dagon, most likely will not be. There's a Salve on Equal. They're going to try to kill Dendi here. They do have a Pudge. A Pudge has been spotted. And Equal comes around from the backside. Dendi might be in trouble. Here comes the Slow, but actually it's a counter gank from Puppy. Puppy's going to be here as well. He's going to have to react to this one. Here comes Geo, dude. He actually does not have his ulti. And night one Night Stalker illusion. A lot of illusions actually come in. There's a hook. It's going to land on Puppy, but it doesn't matter. Perfect counter gank from Puppy showing up at the right time. And Pudge didn't even have his ulti anyway, so I don't really know if they would have gotten that. Dendi's going to take a stun, though. He's going to be in trouble. Throws the stun. Three seconds stun. There's a Clockwork disable as well, but that's it for him. He's going to ulti him close range on Blue Stall as we see Mantis ulti on Light of Heaven. The damage output's insane, though. And Light of Heaven just gets dropped by the track and the right click. Very, very easy kill. We have Night Stalker cleaning up, though. He's going to grab Bat Rider. One Split Earth will miss. All around looking pretty good for next KZ. 
little lightning clearing the wave as well. And uh, Puppy is going to shift back to base. I think this is a bottle finally. Yep, he's going to have a bottle now. So now his roaming is going to work out okay. And roaming Naga Siren is not really the end of the world. Her disables are actually fantastic early on. I mean, her illusions are going to suck. By all means, they'll die easy. Stallcat's going to get killed for sure by Hovost. It's just an easy 1-2 or he'll just use Void. No, just hits him once more. Very, very easy kill by Hovost. And that's the power of Night Stalker, picking off kills on those heroes. So Leshrac dies. And they may continue to push the tower. We're going to have Ice Path doing some damage to the wave. I think he's going to save Dual Breath. The damage for mana uses is just not worth it on creep. So we'll do their best to push the tower. 900 gold on Invoker as well. Here's the TP to the top lane. As Chaos Knight actually wants to make another kill. Treads Bracer and a bottle now. And Light of Heaven back to the bot lane to grab some EXP. He did try ganking top, of course, but he died so easily. He only has 900 HP here. Um, dare I say he needs a strength buff? Did he get a strength buff? I, I think, did he? I think he did. Might be wrong though. So Bounty Hunter's looking for kills, level 7. Plenty of burst damage, maxed out Shuriken toss. 325 nuke there. Light of Heaven's gonna walk past a regen actually. But I think they're looking for kills bottom. Um, Night Stalker obviously. One of the best diving heroes in the game. Pops his ulti. I don't know what the cooldown of nighttime is other than that. Puppy's gonna find the regen though. And he pops his ulti. I'm sorry, his uh, mirror image. He's gonna send those mid to counter push while he does go bottom. He will be able to use Riptide. It goes off on all of the illusions as well. So here it goes. He's gonna walk up to the creep wave. And then he's gonna Riptide. Oh, it actually gets killed really fast. Arzard out of trouble. Four seconds. Or in trouble, that is. Barretter gets the kill. Very easy kill on him. Stallcat's playing really well. He's actually up to 1,300 gold now, which means he may be going to fast blink rush. And with the bottle up, he definitely has the regen for it. So mid tower taking a ton of damage. Bot tower is going to be tried to trade by Navi, as Vos and Puppy are going to do their best down here. I mean, they have to try to take a tower. There's the glyph popped, and I'm sure the raiding team can do the same thing. Now they're actually on cooldown for glyph, 45 seconds. So they can do a decent amount of damage. I don't believe they'll be able to kill this, but they can get it low. There's a Sunstrike landing just on Pudge. But he doesn't even care. Tranquil Boot's actually on him. I think it's a very smart choice. Um, and also Dendi pressuring top a bit. It's going to be getting low by the catapult. It's going to be queuing up a meteor in case anybody comes. Here comes Blue Stall. Here comes the meteor. There's the macro pyro. Oh my god, the damage output. That was insane. Dendi and Arzart, that was such smart play. They saw that one coming. Look at this. They had the Observer Ward. This is exactly why he queued up the meteor. Man, that was so much fire. So much fire on the top lane. And they pick off a kill very easily. And that was the Chaos Knight as well. Big, big kill on him. Very cool to see. Chaos Meteor, Cold Feet, and uh, Ice Path as well. Big disables. Very cool. And a Macro Pyre. I mean, the Macro Pyre is cool too. So much fire. Burning. Burning everywhere. Tower Bot being pushed now. Hovost still there with Puppy. And he's going to try to clear the wave a little bit using the Illusions. Equal is going to show up. Might be going. There's the initiation. Actually, they're going to be have to gonna have to track. Actually, Equal is not ready for the So Actually, they're going to get the Rift off on Puppy. Three seconds done. Can he get the Song of the Siren? I don't think he will. And that's going to be it for him. No time to ulti, and they pick up a kill on the bot lane. He was not able to Song of the Siren quite fast enough. Stun for the Chaos Knight was not what he was expecting, I'm guess. I'm guessing. Oh my god, no, it's gotta be a 4 staff, right? He's not gonna go Dagon? Probably not. It could be a Dagon, though. It really could be a Dagon. I'd be so surprised, though. He already has a little mana problems because his spells are pretty expensive. Um, and it is gonna be a 4 staff, okay. We can all feel safe now. Just a 4 staff. Great vitality booster for Light of Heaven. Definitely the item that Clockwork needs in the mid game. We see a chase going on equal. Could be a little rocket damage. Surprise Clockwork has so little mana actually, despite having Arcane Boots. Only 575. Really not that high. Really boosting up his mana pool due to Arcane Boots. But the vitality booster is super important. Armor's still a little low himself as well. Two, only 2 armor here. And it's daytime. Freshly daytime. Havos doesn't have his ulti quite yet, but once he gets this, it'll be okay. He can't use it for 20 seconds in a team fight, but they're scouting on Puppy. Puppy's still level 6. Gonna find a Bat Rider. Does a little damage to these guys. And they're gonna take the tower, I think. Can they get denied? We'll see. Equal's gonna try to deny it here. Here comes the deny. Oh, and Bounty Hunter takes it. Big deny against Navi. Oh, actually, there's an ulti going down. Song of the Siren gonna set up. Cold Snap was used. Slight mistake there. Sentry's little Sun Strike. Here it's coming off. Cold Pet. Wow, that was perfect coordination. Equal's gonna go down pretty quick here. Pops a magic stick, but that's it. There's an ulti from Light of Heaven, but he's gonna whiff on that one. And we do see Havos getting picked off in the team fight. One ulti coming through as well. And Jakiro. Jakiro's the next to die, but Mantis taking right clicks. Dandy does do pretty good damage. Light of Heaven out of position, though. He's gonna have to get out of the cogs. And there's another reality of trying to grab Puppy as well. He's gonna pop illusions. A stun coming up in a second. This could be the death of Light of Heaven. There's a Chaos Meteor gonna buy him second there comes through wow three dance three seconds and yeah he does get the kill a uh, dismember as well as naga siren goes down and a pretty good team fight win for for next kz there actually navi not doing so hot the coordination was awesome on the
Bounty Hunter. They did kill Bounty Hunter, but I believe he did buy back. I think he died. I'm pretty sure this guy died. He has no regen. He was just full HP, which wouldn't have happened if he did actually have a team fight. So pretty good team fight for next KZ. Navi's not going to win that one. Nine to thirteen. If we look at the graph, it's actually a Navi advantage, uh, slightly up since the loss of the team fight. This could be much higher as well, by the way, if the deny didn't go through. And the EXP from that swinging all the way into next KZ's favor now, and even jumping up a little bit. So very very good team fight for next KZ. Though Navi does have much better map control. The only tower they've lost is their tier one mid, whereas uh, next KZ has now lost four towers. Pretty significant. Jakiro level 8, he's going to be maxing out dual breath second, very good choice. The damage I think is just going to be required against heroes like Chaos Knight. If you could just burst him down, he's not that much of a threat. He's not going to have BKB for a while. And even still, killing his illusions is always going to be really, really effective. So taking out his illusions is always awesome. Blink Dagger on Batrider, all they need is vision. Vos is running through the river. He runs really weird when he doesn't have wings. It looks so perfect when he doesn't have wings, but now it looks all weird and stuff. Pretty cool. Wildlings being pushed, some farming going on by the rest of Navi, most notably the Naga Siren. And Dendi's still mid, 1500 gold on him, he's got decent HP, uh, 4 levels of Exhort and waiting on 1 Quas, so they can do the double initiation of Vos actually getting jumped on big time by these guys, Light of Heaven tried to help out, there's the Cogs, it's going to buy him some time, no the Reality Rift sends him forward and Vos does get picked off, Sunstrike as well, here comes the Meteor Equal, takes a ton of damage, Chaos Meteor doing big damage as well, great Ice Path, couple right clicks from Blue Stall and Dual Breath is going to secure his death. Really nice plays there. Light of Heaven needs to maybe hook, but he's off cool on cooldown. Has been whiffing his hooks. All great blink off the ice path. And a TP now for Pudge. Pudge ends up surviving. So pretty good escapes there. Light of Heaven not really able to make his clockwork pay off just yet. But Navi did win the team fight. The Chaos Meteor really paying off with the combination of the ice path. It is a very cool combo. I mean, if you think about it, they're both line spells. So if you're standing in here in a group and you want to fight the team over here, both spells are just going to go in a line. You can set up the kills perfectly. It's not that hard to coordinate. You just say, Ice Path, and then you throw the Chaos Meteor, and then you Cold Snap, and then magic happens, and lots of people die. At least one guy takes a lot of damage, which has been Bounty Hunter this game. Um, he And he doesn't have that much HP. He's actually went Vlad's right after the phase boots. So going for the aggressive um, kind of ganking utility build, that doesn't have that much HP, basically. And it's, it, it's going to be okay. It's going to be useful to his allies, but... In terms of magic damage survivability, he's not going to have very much at all. And we might see a gank on the Chaos Knight, actually. Dendi, thinking about it. He's got a Blast as well as a Sunstrike. Jakiro coming in, looking for the Ice Path. Can they land the Ice Path? It might just do a Dual Breath for us. Here comes the split. Dual Breath going to start things off. Ice Path actually going in. And there's the Cogs actually catching him pretty well. And might see a Macro Pyre as well. Look at the damage output from the Meteor. It's pretty huge. He actually is going to swap places with Jakiro. But Barretta comes in, wants to kill an Arzard. Arzard's almost out of spells. He's going to put the Ice Path down. Does catch the equal, actually. Nice play there. But a hook onto Dendi. And Dendi getting dismembered by Geo, dude. I don't think he's going to be able to get the kill, though. Dendi's walking away. He can go invisible if he needs to. He's actually not going to. There's a tornado, actually. Slight misplays from Dendi, not able to escape. And another Cogs from Light of Heaven trying to stay alive, but he's up against three heroes, and they are all going to die. Wow, three heroes dying on the bot lane. They did a great job picking off the Chaos Knight, but ganking him so close to the Tier 2 tower means TP support, and that's exactly what happened. TP support came through, and three heroes now die for the cost of one. On the bright side, Night Stalker is still farming. He's going for an Aghanim Scepter. His farm is not amazing, though. And Naga Siren also picking up farm, but considering he started off as a support Naga and he doesn't have a lot of kills, mostly deaths and assists, things are not looking fantastic for Navi. So there's a net worth up in the up in the uh, top left here, and Valkyrie is doing the best, going for a sheep stick afterwards. Bot tower is going to be taken most likely. He's killed that and assists if you guys are curious as well, and Mantis is just going to clear the creep wave. He's actually finding Arzart, looking for the hook, but not going to grab it. Pudge now level 9. No flesh sheeps yet. Here comes the hook. Oh, he grabs Arzard. He did have the vision. There's this member as well. Big mistake from Arzard. Arzard has no chance of surviving this one. Easy kill. Dendi's going to stay up for a while. There's a tornado. Might see an EMP, but it's such a low level. It's only going to drain like 100 mana. And it takes forever to explode. Look at that EMP. Worthless at level 1. It's official. That was 100 mana drained. 3.7 charge time. May have been a miscue. And once again, Light of Heaven's going to miss a hook, so... Man, the hero's really not working out quite yet for Navi. I think some of their coordination and picks are pretty interesting, but this is looking good for next KZ. So equal blue Stolly all pushing top now. Vlad's is up, of course. 
tier 1 tower is going to be able to be picked off. And Navi's actually going to trade this for Roshan. I like this choice. They do have two Forge Spirits, sorry. Uh, they don't l lower the armor of Roshan, but they do add the damage to it, of course. So they're going to toggle a little bit for who's taking the damage. There's pings from the Radiant team. They finally figured out what's going on, and the Illusions are leaving the pit to go look for heroes. And Rockets as well, and they just want to see if the Radiant team's coming, but they're not. And they're going to be able to snake this Rashawn pretty easily. So nice play from Navi to take this. They did trade a tier 1 tower for this, but considering they now have an Aegis on Invoker, I think this is worth it. Pretty smart little pickup. Some damage on Mantis as he does have Treads. Ogre Club, he's going to go for a BKB. That'll be very nice. Actually, we're going to see a gank going in. Puppy, Puppy in trouble. He pops the ulti, though. He's going to be down to 90 HP, but this will buy him some time. Here comes the Ice Path. Actually, Liquid Fire going first. Ice Path as well, but just going to catch the Illusions. Actually, not bad. Blue Stolly comes back into a Bat Rider. Looking for kills. Equal wants Puppy. Oh, my God. He dodged it with the mirror image. Great place from Puppy. Throws the net on top of Bounty Hunter as well and taking some tower damage. But most importantly, he just survived. He doesn't even need to get the kills. Light of Heaven's going to do his best, but does get killed. And Navi Dendi is trying to snag a kill as well. There's a Daphne Blast going to buy him a little bit of time. Man, that was such a good dodge from Puppy. I thought he was 100% dead, but he dodged it. Dodged it with the mirror image. Sick play, man. Such sick play. Like going on the mid tower at least. Next case, he did still win the team fight, picking off a Jakiro as well as a Clockwork Goblin. He is using Edict to just destroy this tower. Big minus armor coming on Geodude at least. One thing that they can do to be generally annoying. And now the Forge Spirits spread out a little bit. They don't want to die. Live, Forge Spirits, live. Looking to catch somebody. And Chaos Knight level 13 now, so he's still getting a really good farm. Does he have any items on the courier? Uh, he does, actually. He's almost at a BKB. Very, very short. 500 gold, and he's got a Black King bar. And at that point, he's going to be able to fight pretty well against Navi. Now, one thing they could do is, once the BKBs come out, they could just pop Naga's ulti. When you pop Naga's ulti, it doesn't work on magic immune targets, so if if the Chaos Knight does hop in, you could pop the Naga ulti, it's going to sleep all of the illusions, it won't sleep the primary Chaos Knight, you can net him, and then all of Navi can just kill the guy before his BKB, while his BKB is still on. That's an option, it is an option. But Barret is going to have a BKB shortly as well, there may be other heroes, looks like Leshrac's going BKB, looks like Bounty Hunter's going BKB, everybody is going Black King Bar and XKZ, except for Pudge. So there is some possibility of them using their ulti in that sense. Um, it could happen. Night Stalker's really not carrying right now. He's going for Aegidim Scepter. He's doing okay on it. Uh, but Clockwork hasn't really made a lot of performance-based things just yet this game. Missed a lot of hook shots, and I think that's the main issue that things have been a little rough. But Denny's going to be maxing out Exhort next. going to be using that, of course, for lots of meteors and fun things like that. If you want to look at the hero levels, there they are. Bot 3 are Clockwork, Twin-Headed Dragon, as well as the support Naga Siren. And Puppy actually going for drums. Cool choice. Um, when you have Bottle, Treads does make you go a lot farther. Uh, Mantis is going to take some damage, but he's hasted. And even though Night Stalker is really fast, it's not, not going to matter. So he walks away. Snags the DD. He actually got a haste and a double damage, I believe, on the top lane. So that was a pretty good pickup for him. And Vost ready to buy his next items. He has a Blade of Lacrity. And just needs 350 gold, and then he's got it. So... His Aghanim Scepter, that is. We'll have his Aghanim Scepter. Very great item for Night Stalker. They'll be able to spot Pudge very easily. That's also very important because if anybody gets hooked, it sucks. Uh, if they don't get hooked, then Pudge is not that great of a hero. And that'll be what they're hoping for. No hooks from Pudge. No hooks from Pudge. EXP per minute is really high for Chaos Knight. He's been doing a great job. Uh, farming as well as getting team fights off at the right times. Critting for about 500 damage right now. Pretty fantastic. Considering he's not really that focused on getting a crit usually, it's a pretty low chance, 10% chance for a 300% crit. He had a lot of crits right there, actually. Oh, they're actually going on Havos bot lane. He is really fast, though. As this runs out, there's an Naga Siren ulti. It's going to buy him some time. We'll see if he fights this one. One Sentry Ward is placed down. Puppy's going to use his illusions, and here comes the fight. Riptide. Oh, tor actually not going to start. Tornado first, and then the Meteor coming through. Wow, they pick up Bounty Hunter so easily. Net on Mantis, and the right clicks on him. Havos is still being careful, but easy kill. Great setup there, and that's the counter initiation that Navi's been waiting for finally. And they got a double kill very, very easily, actually chasing after a Pudge. Geodude is going to get caught. He's going to look for the TP. They will have vision. Here comes the net. Needs the net. There's the net. And there's the nuke as well. And Geodude is now going to die. Can he sacrifice? That's all he can do. Throws out the hook. Not going to matter. Blue Stolly actually using his BKB. Then he's got to be careful. He's got Aegis, though. Wow, Reality Rift clears him out right off the bat. And there's the Cog in the Light of Heaven. This is not what he wanted. Oh, the tornado so short range. And Blue Stolly's damage is way too high. They're easily able to pick off a Clockwork using his Illusions. I see Illusions again. A little bit of right clicks. Puppy's got to run. 
one Riptide to do some damage. Wow, they lost three heroes there. Jakiro also died again. Um, Jakiro apparently dying in the mix midst. Oh, I'm sorry. This was on the way towards the bot. Um, Night Stalker also died. So Night Stalker died in the dive. Clockwork died in the dive. And Jakiro did as well going for the pudge. They basically lost three heroes, I think. Just going for that. Just going for the pudge. Kind of a big loss there. Con especially considering they grabbed the first two kills at the start without losing anybody. I mean, that was such great play, but it just didn't work out for them. Here's a graph if you guys are curious. Next KZ is in the lead. They do have track gold every time they get a kill. Assuming that the guy is tracked, of course. Very, very useful. Might be going on Puppy. There they go in. Can I end up last man? Oh, he got broken with the... Oh my gosh. Reality Rift ends up breaking the tether. Tornado as well. Puppy gets low. Dual Breath. Definitely blast as well. Meteor coming through. Knocking hit everybody. He gets picked off though. Very easy kill on him. The AoE damage is actually pretty impressive on him. There's a Hex on Stall Cat as well. And they clean up really hard. Three easy kills there. I mean, their magic nukes are not bad by any means. They are not. If the BKB is not up, Chaos Knight did not pop his BKB in time. There's Dual Breath. There is Macro Pyre. There is plenty. Meteor Blast. I mean, Dendi is really leveraging the Chaos Meteor this game. I have not seen so many Chaos Meteors before, but we're seeing so many Chaos Meteors. Not really focusing on Sunstrike. S Sunstrikes. He's focusing on Chaos Meteors, and it's doing the damage, especially with Exhort now, Max. The damage output from that spell is ridiculous. 162.5 per tick. That's every 0.5 seconds. That's in one second. That's essentially about 300 damage per second that they're in the Chaos Meteor. So if you can throw that through an Ice Path or through a Naga Net, it is really, really good damage. So Hovo says his Aegon Scepter up, so he will be able to see, as you can look on the map, there's a giant circle surrounding him. He'll be able to see anything within that radius. Light of Heaven is jungling to his best ability. Still only level 11, but his hook is level 2. And 1,200 gold on him with the Planeswalker's Cloak. Definitely not doing as well as uh, we expected. 6 deaths and 9 assists. It's okay. It's better than it used to be. He was much farther behind. He was sitting at only about 5 deaths, 5 assists before. So his assist ratio much better at the moment. But even still, very squishy hero. 3 armor only. He's going to get absolutely destroyed by Casna. We've seen that before. Even if you cog him in, he's just going to jump on you and do a ton of damage. So, definitely puts Clockwork in a scary spot. Puppy with Treads, Drum. And Dendi, once again, does have Sheepsick finished. So, Dendi is looking good. Mid push, actually, Smoke Gank from next KZ. They're going to run past an Observer. That will do nothing, though, because there's going to be no vision. And that was a Radiant search, or Observer. Anyways, here it comes. Running into Bose. There's the first track. Reality Rift looking for the stun. Three second. Oh, Puppy's going to counter initiate. This is perfect. Here comes the team fight. All of Dendi's, Dendi's going to be able to set up. Here comes the Meteor. Here comes the Blast as well. This could be insane. Tornado actually starts things off a little bit. Meteor as well. Only going to catch on Stallcat. Stallcat gets picked off quite rapidly. Dendi goes low. Go Scepters as well. Go Invisible. Trying to stay alive. Great ice path. Everybody runs into it from the raiding team. And Hobos getting very low, though. The burst damage is too much. And equals well. Hookshot's going to catch four. And they're all put so low. There's equal. Dendi might be able to grab that. There's the hex. Couple right clicks and equal will go down. Good pick off from Dendi. Going to run into Mantis as well as Havos buys back. And that is looking really good for Navi right now. There's the silence. There's the cold snap. And the blue Stalin now. You are pretty much guaranteed to die. More right clicks. Can he die to neutral? It's not even going to happen. Definitely great buyback there from the Night Stalker. We did see a Pudge Suicide, but Night Stalker buying back paid off big time. It was able to clean up the Bat Rider in addition to helping out against the Chaos Knight. So, big team fight went from Navi, showing the power of Song of the Siren, though. If that was not for Song, Havos would have died right at the start of the team fight without getting any, any nukes at all. He just would have been dead and would have had to buy back without casting anything. At the very least, he was able to tank up 2,000 points of damage while the rest of his allies were swinging and doing doing some hits as well, so that was some nice plays there. Tier 2 tower taking some damage now. I was a little ups I was I thought the coordination may might have been a little bit better for the team fight though. Um, after the Song of the Siren setup, he wasn't able to get, I think he had like a tornado into a meteor, I believe, instead of using just meteor right off the bat with a blast, something like that. His tornado doesn't do terrible damage though, he is actually maxing out Wex next, I believe, so he'll be getting uh, leverage out of that. It does pretty good nuke damage. But I felt like the um, the ice pass stacking didn't quite work out nicely. I was hoping to see a little bit better. Hovos actually getting caught. How did he get caught here? He's got an Aghanim Scepter. He blinked on him. Uh, he is tracked. That's how he got spotted. They're going to team fight again. Going on equal. Equal gets hexed. This is a really good kill. Thing kill Bounty Hunter. That'd be great. But he gets low. Doesn't happen. Tornado comes through. There's the Meteor as well. Stallcat gets nailed. But he does dodge the Meteor a little bit. Pudge is going to dismember on somebody. It's going to be Arzard actually. Arzard looks like he will die in this team fight. Song of the Siren actually going to buy him some time. He's going to have to run through the rock. Gets tracked though. Now running away, there's the stun. Three seconds stun, Arzard's gone. No TP scroll for him, and Puppy just had to walk out. 
nothing he could really do about it. But yeah, Arzart should not be getting initiated on at nighttime. It just shouldn't happen. Um, he does have the night vision. He was tracked, so Barretter was going straight towards him, and perhaps he didn't realize he was tracked, and that's why he was like, oh, I'm fine. I can just walk away. There's no way the Barretter knows I'm here. So they did force a team fight. They traded Leshrac for a Jakiro, but now the Roshan is about to be up. So Roshan's going to respawn right now. Arzard's up in 20 seconds. Apparently, next KZ wants to fight it, but they're actually getting low by the Rockets. Rockets will be spammed. 14 second cooldown on that one, and the Illusions come through, do some slight damage. One TP out by Barretter. Maybe Navi will fight this now. I dare say they could. There's a Mythical Hammer on Night Soccer going BKB next. Going to remove his Lincoln Sphere. A couple right clicks as well. Dendi going BKB. Love the choice. Equal actually jungling. Does he realize that they're taking it? I, I don't know if they do. A little bit of missile to keep some vision in the river. And Light of Heaven, I love his positioning here. If he was in the... He doesn't need to stand in here because if he initiates, he can initiate from this giant range here. Look at this. Anybody within this range, he can jump on. And he's just looking for hookshot targets. There's a smoke actually. Blue Stolly goes in. Aegis gets picked off and they're going to run right into it. There's the BKB as well. Can they kill the illusions though? That's the important part. Reduces damage output. Dendi force staffs out. And there's the net on him. Oh man, this might be bad for Chaos Knight actually. The right clicks. His BKB runs out. There's another reality rift. Dendi's getting low. He's in trouble, but he does have Aegis even if he dies here. And now Hobos getting ulted as well. Dendi to the high ground. He's going to use the ice wall, but he is going to get picked off. So Aegis is gone now. They're not done fighting. Batrider is dead. Bounty Hunter's dead as well. Stallcat's going to go down. Light of Heaven picking him off. And here comes the kill. Yeah, that's it for Chaos Knight. So four heroes dead. They did burn the Aegis, but totally worthwhile trade there for Navi, especially after taking Roshan. They take Roshan. They get the Aegis. The Aegis goes away, but, you know, I don't even think that's that big of a deal anymore because Aegis is only a six-minute cooldown. So, And they used it to get a kill. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to trade Aegis for a team fight advantage. And that's exactly what Navi just did. 28 kills to 26 now. If we look at the graph, it's now a 4k gold advantage for Navi as a result of their last couple good team fights. And EXP difference is also pretty significant. 10k advantage now for Navi. They're going to be pushing it mid alacrity on Naga Siren. They do have ulti. If things go bad, they can stop it. Most importantly, does somebody get hooked? They will be able to survive against it. Mid tower is going down though. Track starting off on Light of Heaven. And tower is going to fall. They may end up going for the racks here. If they can take the melee barracks, it's going to be excellent for Navi. Only three levels of liquid fire. Not that much mana on Arzart. They may have to back off, though. They're feeling a little scared. There's some Forge Spirits. Oh, somebody's going to get hooked, though. Navi's going to pop the ulti, though. And are they going to fight this is the real question. They're going to try to line up Arzart looking for the Ice Path. Here comes the Ice Path and the Meteor. A little turned off early, uh, a little bit late, actually. Light of Heaven going to try to cog in, but not catch anyone. Dendi on the high ground. Four staffs. Doesn't go to low ground. Dendi in so much trouble now. There's the dismember. Dendi goes down. Ice Path as well, and they just needed to run. They stayed way too long. Track on Arzart. Arzart, I don't know if he's going to survive. If he gets the track, yeah, it's over. He just got the track movement speed bonus, and Arzart is in so much trouble. There's the right click. 300 damage. Goodbye. Flame break as well. <laughs> Everybody trying to snake the kill, but Equal's going to get it. And that scares him a Black King bar. It's actually going to be a Desolator on Night Stalker, surprisingly. So he wants the minus armor to eat through Pudge, as well as Chaos Knight. Both pretty tanky heroes. They should not have fought that. The coordination did not work out for that one. It's going to be a Sacred Relic, actually, for Naga Siren. She is actually going to go a late Radiance. So 32-minute Radiance. Very interesting. Does he realize he's completely surrounded? Here's Equal, but he doesn't even know. There's the Illusions coming through. They're going to go on Mantis, I think, but he doesn't know Equal's here. There's the Riptide. He's going to right-click. Booting Mantis pretty low, but oh my god, the Reality Rift. Light of Heaven's like, oh, hey, guys, what's, uh, what's going on? And then he died. Navi just throwing a lot of themselves away. Light of Heaven and Naga Siren. Jakiro just now respawning. That was a very peculiar put from them. Not something we usually see out of them. But they were feeling in an advantage, I guess. So they wanted to go do two-man ganks when three of the heroes were dead, or two of the heroes were dead. Kind of weird. Geodude on the bot lane. He's got 17 on a gold. Uh, hood, I guess, is what he's going to make. Yeah, he's going to go hood. Very worthy. Uh, very worthwhile in this game. Against Invoker, Exor Invoker, they've got a Jakiro. Even Naga Siren does some decent damage. Uh, is this magic? It is, yeah. Riptide at least is magical. And once he gets the Radiance, of course, they will reflect that damage. So I get him Scepter on Invoker. Oh, man. We are going to see some Dendi Invoker, guys. Fastest fingers in the West going after Equal. Chasing, he's, his Hex has been used, but didn't really pay off too hard. Tornado's going to whiff him, though. And he will simply walk back. So the fantastic thing about Aghanim's, the cooldown for Invoke goes down to two seconds. Oh, man, he's getting chased. Four step back, though. That's close. And his Wex being almost max means that pretty much every spell is as good as it needs to be. I mean, some of his slows won't be fantastic. The Ice Wall 
only slows for 80%, guys, instead of 140. You know, pretty crappy. Not that good, but uh, just kidding. Tons of damage now. He's got Definitely Blast, Chaos Meteor, max damage from those. His Tornado is getting up there in damage as well. Uh, doing 180. Uh, it's like 250 damage nuke with the Tornado. He just has so many spells that he can cast. He's got unlimited mana because he has Scythe of Ice as well. It's just looking fantastic. Now, Naga Siren does have to finish the Radiance. It's going to help a lot, though, against the Radiant Team. It will burn through the Illusions pretty rapidly. It's going to interrupt Blink Daggers as well. All they need to do is have Illusions stand next to Bat Rider, and then he can't blink unless he pops a BKB and waits three seconds. It's the only way he will be able to use his Blink Dagger. Denied. Blue Stolly picking, still picking up farm. Uh, BKB for him. He's had the Sunge. Probably going to go Heaven's Halberd, maybe. I, this is going to kind of reduce his carry potential, though. So... The nice thing about it is, though, it does give you a lot of strength. 16 strength increases your HP by about as much as a Vanguard. It increases your survivability. Um, you get the Maim as well if you're chasing people, which is relatively good as well. Not a bad thing. Puppy getting very close, about 350 gold away. He's actually going to net on equal. He's going to right-click a little bit. Here comes Arzart. Arzart looking to disable. Great hook from Pudge actually going to get him out of there. And Puppy, 250 gold away. I mean, really late Radiance, but he's playing support Naga Siren, so it completely makes sense. It's it's not expected for him to have a good Radiance. And it, the cool part is that he will be able to transition to a hard carry like this. I mean, the farm rate that you get from Radiance is fantastic. You can absolutely wreck a jungle solo as a Naga Siren. Might get hooked. Actually, Batrider wants to make the plays. Do they realize there's Batrider on the high ground? Centaur put down. Puppy's going to get snagged. Can he pull him to low ground? I don't think he will be able to, but might see a hook. Here comes the hook. Puppy puts the ulti down just as the hook comes out. I don't know. Is he going to fight this? He did buy the Radiance, so even if he dies, it's not the end of the world. Looking to net on Mantis, and there it goes down. Hook to the high ground. Grabs him, but they are going to be able to escape now. Here comes the Dual Breath. Buys him some time. Sunstrike. Light of Heaven goes in. Flame Break. Oh my god, the Macro Pyre damage is insane. And Mantis does get picked off. Pudge now in trouble. There's the Cogs. Light of Heaven is not done yet. There's the Meteor Ice Pass. So much damage on Geodude. He has a hood, but you can't even tell. He just dies so fast, and they're not done chasing yet. They want to grab Equal, but Equal's invisible. Won't be able to snag him. Ec he breaks Invis on a creep. Art oh my god. There's the Hex. That's going to give him the minus armor. Cold Snap is well. Puts Equal low. He's going to go invisible in a second. Pops a BKB though. BKB and Invis. Equal will be fine. Is he going to try to break Invis with the Tornado? He will, but uh, juke the wrong way. Really nice place from Navi there. Great reaction. Man, that hook. As soon as the hook landed on the Naga, that would have been it. I thought for sure Naga was going to get hooked up to the high ground and just get crushed. But the great reaction time there. Radiance is up, of course. There's the burn that we all love. Naga Siren's Illusions do the same thing. They do exert the Illusion or the Burning Radius. And look at that. Even even the Chaos Knight is taking decent damage from these things. Equal is getting low. He's going to have to go back to base. As Navi is now pushing towards the Tier 2 bottom. Aghanim Scepter finished on Clockwork. Pretty light Aghanims, but... Great item choice. It's going to reduce the cooldown down to 15 seconds for hookshot. And it allows you to hookshot on your allies. He's going to be able to max out 300 damage, 2 seconds stun duration. It's actually a great ability once you grab Aghanim Scepter. One of the best Aghanims in my opinion. But Clockwork still doesn't see a whole lot of play. There's some rockets starting things off. Blink in. Tornado actually going to break the initiation for the Barretter, but he does get the BKB pop. Meteor as well, pulling Dendi back a little bit, but the damage output is not that insane. Blue Stall gets entangled. Dendi is actually going to get killed immediately. Great plays there. Did he even get his BKB off? He doesn't actually have one. A little bit of ice as well. He goes in. Oh my god, the crit is insane. Stuns on Light of Heaven as well. Dual Breath try to reduce the damage, but man, Navi just gets crushed in a team fight there. Naga Siren buys back. They were not able to set up like they wanted to there. I don't know if that was a result. It was Puppy. I don't even know if Puppy, Puppy was there, but they lost four. Four heroes and a buyback. Buyback was uh, Naga Siren, so. Did Night Stalker buy back as well? He still got tracked, so maybe he survived. I guess. Must have survived. Kill neutrals. Man, he kills neutrals really fast with the Desolator. Oh, he's in trouble, though. Here. Oh, this is so bad for Hobos. He, he's got a, he, get, he has to pop the ulti, and there it is. There's the silence. Actually, the crits are insane, though. Oh, big ulti from Naga. That's going to keep him alive. Great play by Puppy there. Hobos will live. Did have to use his ultimate. Naga had to use her ultimate, but it's okay. 60 seconds. Oh, the hook! Puppy runs into it. He doesn't move. And now he comes to Dismember. Dismember a little bit late, though. And the damage is coming down on Puppy. He's not going to have his ulti to save himself this time. And he ends up sacrificing himself. For the Night Stalker, did he realize? I, was that a blind hook? I think that... Oh, no, he was tracked. Was he tracked? I don't think he was tracked. I think that was a blind hook. I honestly think that was a blind hook. Puppy says, I just got hooked here, standing still. They obviously have vision, but they don't. I, I think that was just a blind hook from Pudge. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I don't think he was tracked. Unless, unless maybe... 
Maybe it was that you track the Night Stalker, and then you get Night Stalker's vision, and Night Stalker's vision is imbalanced, and therefore he could see he could see the Naga Siren. It might have been that. Maybe it was that. Not quite sure. Armlet is actually picked up by Chaos Knight. Really, this is the latest Armlet I've ever seen in my entire life. Armlet Sanj. Um, bright side about Armlet gives yourself a lot of bonus strength. And this all gets transmitted to your illusions. Because your illusions are based off your primary damage attribute. This gives you tons of strength, so therefore, big damage from Armlet. Cool item choice. A little bit late. I mean, maybe Heart would be better, but um, he's got BKB, so he doesn't have to worry about dying that bad. And he did crush pretty hard in the last fight. Jumped on Dendi pretty rapidly there. Dendi may be going for... Maybe Shiva's Guard? I would actually like to see a Shiva's Guard, I think. I mean, the, the second Mystic Staff, it's gotta be. Uh, it's gonna be Shiva's Guard. It's gotta be. Um, definitely needs the survivability. The extra 15 armor is fantastic. He'll get the minus attack speed aura against the opponents. And he's gonna be able to do 200 AoE movement speed reduction nuke. Great against Illusion Heroes. Melee Illusion Heroes especially. Very good against them. If Melee Heroes are slow, they're not auto-attacking, auto unless they're perfectly in position. And there's the smoke being used, so... It is actually Sanjin Yasha on Chaos Knight. Not going to be using it for a Heaven's Halberd. He goes for the Sanjin Yasha. So big movement speed. Attack speed as well. The attack speed does go to his illusions because of the agility. Only 16. But most importantly, the movement speed is up there. So he's much, much faster as a hero. Smoke gets revealed. So he knows that they're chasing. Puppy might be able to ulti this. We'll see if he pops it. They're going to go in. There's the BKB from Blue Stall. Is he going to counter initiate? He is going to. And they're going to fight. This is 2v2. Havos is going really low, but it doesn't matter. Hey, a BKB is going to run out. Stallcat gets picked off right at the start of the fight. That was exactly what I was talking about earlier. Tons of damage on blue still bkb on the barret as well dandy gets low he's got to run his track is up he's might get hooked he's being chased by everybody in the rating team and he is going to get picked off ice path scores a kill on the uh chaos knight though and light of heaven cogs himself in throws the ulti but still does die to magic damage and not the best fight for navi they did pick off two heroes for both getting healed up he's got a gem of true side as well hyperstone going for an ac they want to grab Puppy. Puppy's in trouble. Can he get hooked? He gets hooked. Not good. Runs the opposite direction. Though. Great play. Pudge is chasing. There's the illusions coming through. Going to buy himself some seconds. There's the stun as well. And they might actually grab equal. They do grab equal. Havos comes in clean and up big time with that minus six armor. Damage output from Night Stalker is absolutely sick using this Desolator. I must say, the attack speed plus Desolator has been really impressing me in the damage output. Didn't buy a Monkey King bar. He went Desolator. 4,000 gold for this huge damage output item. And Mantis now may die as well. Ice Path on the high ground. Firefly's about to run out. There's a dual breath as well. Puts him slow. And Havost wants to kill. There's the Void. He's going to use the ulti at least. And this does make it daytime to buy him some time. But here comes an Ice Path. And once this Ice Path lands, I think that is just about it. Here comes Ice Path. Goodbye, Mantis. And Havost is going to be able to take you down. Nice play by Havost. And great great uh, baiting from Puppy as well. He ran in circles. I don't think he got hooked on purpose in the first place, but he survived with a smidgen of HP, and that allowed Havos to get three kills out of that. A double kill plus as well, taking down the Bat Raider. Now four heroes dead. They're going to be able to take Aegis. They really need to put this on Invoker, though. He does have his Shiva's guard finish. He's going to TP to the Tier 2. He needs to be here for this Aegis because he is by far the most important hero on the Dire team, and since he did not go BKB this game, he's got to worry about dying. I, maybe he's not going for it. He doesn't want Aegis. They're going to give it to somebody else. Is it going to be Puppy or Night Stalker? It's going to be Naga Siren out with Aegis, Havos with Cheese. Very surprised that they didn't put the uh, survive that they didn't put Aegis on Dendi. Honestly, he has been the focus, and he has huge contributions to the team fight. Though, if we do look at the BKB counts, there's a lot of BKBs now, which maybe all right, maybe it's worth it. If there's four heroes with Black King bars, Dendi is limited in his team fight ramifications. So. Maybe that's the reason that they're skipping the Aegis. It's the point where Invoker is going to peter off because of Black King Bars. And now Night Stalker is going to be the hard carry. He's got Aegis. I'm sorry, he's got Cheese, he's got Assault Curious, and he's got Desolate. It's a minus 11 armor. Look how hard he hits. He's three-shotting Mud Golems here, doing a lot of damage output and big, big attack speed at night, getting uh, 75 out of Hunter in the Night. It's actually really good damage, honestly. Um, a little surprised we don't see Desolator more often on Night Stalker. And I talked about this very briefly. I, I pointed out that Desolator is 4,100 gold. In terms of single target damage, Desolator is, I th I'm pretty sure it's the best item and most cost efficient item. I think Radiance is also very cost efficient in terms of uh, damage because of the Radiance burn. Damage per cost, that is. But it doesn't give utility, is the problem with Desolator. It gives a minus 6 armor. Normally you need something like a Monkey King bar. If there was any agility carries on XKZ, I'm sure they'd be concerned about that. But we won't see Bounty Hunter going for that. He's actually going for Maelstrom instead. So for attack speed and a little bit of magic burst. But Yeah, very interesting to see Desolator, but it's totally going to pay off here. They're going to have minus 11 armor every time they hit a tower 
or a Rax as well, if he is alive. So it's going to be fantastic. Playmail's picked up on Batrider now. He does not want to have to deal with the Minus Armor anymore. And now it's going to be some counter pushing by Navi. Let's look at the graphs really quick here. EXP earned is going to be in Navi's favor, really up and down game. Gold earned is still in their favor as well, but not the end of the world. It's only about a 10% difference in gold. Not that much. Chaos Knight at, wow, 3200 gold. He's going to be able to maybe work towards his heart next. Um, AC could work as well, just to decrease the armor of his opponents. But interesting choices this game for sure. Sanjin Yasha armlet, very weird. But Sanjin Yasha also very inexpensive now too. It only costs 4,100 gold. Same cost as a Desolator actually. And there's the damage output versus the tower. Pretty solid attack speed. He's going to be able to take the tier 2. I don't think Navi really cares about this one. They don't want to back off and defend it, basically. Jikiro super tanky. Look at this. Treads, Bracer, and a mech. 1,800 HP as a support here. That's insane. Look at this. So much more strength than his agility. But his base armor has actually been buffed pretty much. And look at this. They're going to Alacrity on the Forge Spirit just to do damage to the Rex. And this is something they can do. They throw the stun. Actually, they're going to be able to pick off the Forge Spirit. But they don't really care. They're just going to kind of slow push this. Spawning an Illusions. Looking for a hook. Not going to grab it. Blue Stolly wants an engagement. He's looking for somebody. Almost gets the rift off, but they break vision just a second. Now he's going to back off. Denny goes to the bot lane. Shiva's plus the giant boulder, which happens to roll uphill, as we have seen. And they will all escape for a bit. Little spot, uh, little spot actually. Whose ping was that? That was Clockwork's ping, I believe. A little worried about getting killed. How's Clockwork doing? I haven't seen his items at all. Just uh, sentries, sentries, treads, and Agatum Scepter. His items are still absolutely fine here. Using Battery Salt to farm a bit. The rest of Next KZ is sitting very, very close. They can't be out of position because if Puppy is able to disable them, it's over. I mean, if, if they can catch them separated, he can just pop the Nog ulti. And here comes the possible team fight. Is he going to pop the ulti? He is going to put the ulti down. BKB is on two heroes, so it's a 2v4. Denny's getting low as well. Can they grab Stallcat at the start? Equals getting low as well. The right clicks, and that's exactly why you want to use Naga Siren's ult against the BKBs. So it works out so good. Light of Heaven initiated on Blue Stall here. But here's the dual breath as well. Light of Heaven's got to be careful. He's running away. He's taking so much damage. Big crits there. Jakira doing everything he can. The minus damage reduction is, uh, or the minus attack speed is pretty good. Denny's getting low. Taking fire damage. Goes invisible. He's going to survive 60 HP. And now with silence on top of Barretter as we see more heroes die. Jakiro is going to be dead. Mantis is getting low. Havos wants to kill. Dismember is going to stop it, but the Riptide finishes that off. Havos running away. He's out of cheese, but more right clicks. Dendi is trying to make the plays, putting Blue Stall so low. There's a net, and more right clicks. Armlet toggles is not going to save him. Gets picked off. Hook is not going to land either, and now also Geodude is going down. So, wow. Dendi barely staying alive. 60 HP. Ends up going invisible and still ends up contributing using Shiva's Guard as well as a couple more nukes. Picks off five heroes. They lost two themselves. Jakiro as well as the Clockwork Goblin. I don't see any buybacks here. Unless I am crazy, there's a gold per minute, there's the buyback status. No buybacks at all going on this game. But Dendi, most farmed hero in this game. 2100 gold, 13 kills, 6 deaths, 18 assists. He's been playing fantastic. 3000 gold on him as well, and Havos taking an alacrity. And look at the damage going on towers. Glyph is going to be used for 6 seconds here. Stalkat wants a kill, great hex going on. There's the meteor as well. He might be able to cold snap this. Tornado's going to buy him a second, 4 staffs away. It puts him down to only about 80% HP. There's the cold snap. May force a BKB. And Puppy is going to stroll away with 5,000 gold. Would love to see a heart or a butterfly on Naga Siren. That would be excellent. Little damage on these guys. Well, Puppy is going to stroll away. I might be. Maybe they'll be able to catch him. Reality Rift is pretty long range. It's getting close. If they do catch me, one of his ulti. Sanji Nyasha makes you fast. Goes in. Hook shot from Light of Heaven. He's baiting. Here comes the cogs as well. BKB on somebody. It's actually on equal. Light of Heaven gets the kill actually on the uh, on the Chaos Knight as well. Wow. They get the kills. Everybody's dead. Oh my gosh. Bounty Hunter gets killed, Chaos Knight gets killed, Mega Bait, Clockwork does trade with it, but absolutely worth it there. Puppy hesitated on purpose. He went up to this location, and then he stopped for a second, so the Reality Rift came through, and then immediately the Clockwork Hookshot initiated. And despite the BKBs on Bounty Hunter, he was stable to do, still able to do max battery assault damage on top of the Chaos Knight, which is exactly what they needed there. They may go full high ground. There's the Nets coming through. Going to be dodged by Mantis. Nice blink dodge. Illusions on the high ground. They'll die very easily. Puppy has spent his money on something. And it is going to be a butterfly. So he opts for the evasion as well as the insane attack speed and really, really strong illusions. His illusions are going to be very tough to kill due to physical damage. Magic damage will still cleave them very easily, of course. But I love the choice. It's going to put him even closer towards the carry potential. Heart would just kind of 
continue what he's been doing, which is being there to cast spells. But this is going to allow him to hard carry. Might net from the high grid, we'll see. He's canceling his animation, throws the net down. Going on Mantis, there's the illusions. And the right clicks, ice path. Mantis may just get picked off. There's the first stun. Hook on Dendi, not good for Dendi. There's this member. He does get interrupted by the Naga ulti, actually. Um, not going to stop the Batrider from pulling her really far away, though. But here comes the Macropire. Ice path as well. Geodude in trouble, taking right clicks from Havos. Puffy's getting low. I think he's going to be able to grab him. And Butterfly not able to save him versus Stallcat. Havos wants the next couple kills. Needs a three hit on Stallcat. There's a nuke on Mantis. Can he get the double? There's one kill for sure. Bounty Hunter goes in. Wants to pick off a kill. Grabs Jakiro. Dendi's going to force Staff out. Still alive. Goes Ghost Walk. He does not want to get tracked. The mid melee barracks gets destroyed. Uh, but Havos may end up dying down here. And it looks like he will go down. Gem of Truce out on the ground. Big gold. That was a godlike streak for Havos. Been playing excellently in the mid game here. And Blue Stall now with the gem. Wants to kill Invoker. The movement speed is huge. He's got about 20 advantage over Invoker. Here's the EMP actually. That was exactly where Chaos Knight may be. He's casting every spell that he has possible. There's the Forge Spirits. It's getting close to nighttime though. And Chaos Knight doesn't have the best vision at night. So Invoker is going to be able to get out of here. Maelstrom Yasha at the moment. I would like to see maybe a Mantis style out of Bounty Hunter. That'd be cool to see. Counter push is not bad. Still two heroes dead. Puppy dead for 27 seconds. Arzar for 20. He's going to have a Ghost Scepter and more rewards. Very good choice. Vos is level 25. Mid tower still being pushed. Dendi setting up. What does he got? This is a combo. Tornado. Here comes Meteor Blast, I assume. Here comes the Blast. Setting on equal. It pops the BKB. So he does waste the BKB charge on that. It's going to be on cooldown. I don't know if that was 6-5 to five or 5-5. Five to five. So may not have lost that much. There's a Hex on Blue Stall. Are they going to fight it? Alacrity going on the little Forge Spear. little Minus Armor going on. Actually, they're chasing this. Havos wants to get it disabled. There's a hook shot. It's going to go to Creeps. He's going to fall up in 15 seconds. He did that on purpose. Stun on Dendi. Four seconds. Rowdy Rift. Can they get Oh, great Cog. It's going to separate him by a little bit. It's going to keep Dendi alive, I think. Puts down the Ice Wall. And Blue Stall is going to get killed, I think. A couple more right clicks. Havos takes it out. Great Ice Path to stop the dismember as well. Dual Breath. Macropire on Geodude. Naga's going to ulti. They're going to be able to set this up. Denny's getting ready to cast here. It is Tornado. Cold Snap on Geodude. Tornado setting things up. More damage. It'll put some in the air. Ice Path as well. Geodude goes down very, very easily. And Puppy wants a kill. There's the uh, ulti. Only grabs an illusion, though. So Puppy not too worried about this one. And equal on the high ground. He does not have BKB. He's got invisibility going invisible. And they don't have a gem anymore. So he's going to end up surviving. Definitely Blast being used. Going to miss. There's the Flame Break. And uh, Mantis is out. Oh, Cold Snap stops him. So track as well. Track from track on Evoker, sorry. He blinks away. Equal strolling out. A little terrified right now. Don't have a gem. Don't have a gem. Oh, he's gonna get, get uh he's dead. Sunstrike on Mantis. Yeah. Wow, they actually got him. I'm really surprised. I don't I don't know what they snagged him with. Possibly a hex? I don't know. But they killed him. Mid Rax is being taken out, top rax is being taken out. Navi looks like they will actually win this game. Top Rax goes down, three heroes dead. Melee barracks is gone. Top Rax is gone. Havos is shifting bottom. They want to finish everything right now. And only a ranged top. They're going in. Cold snaps. Stall cap. BKB's pop, but it's not going to be enough. Right clicks. There's the gem on the ground. Hook on equal. Buys him a slight amount of time, but the ice path. There's the meteor. Geodude's dying so quickly to this minus armor. And there's the counter initiation from Puppy to keep him alive. Our going to be able to back out a bit. Snake the gem. Snake the gem. He grabs the gem. Kills the gem. Ice path again. BKB from Stall. Stali. Dendi gets stunned for a second. Needs a crit to kill Dendi. It's going to get close. He does get the kill. Doesn't even need a crit. And Puppy now right clicking. Big agility out of the Naga Sarin. Night Stalker grabs the track bottom. Ghost Scepter from Arzar. Buys him a second. Invisible Bounty Hunter though. And I think that's going to be for Arzar. Gets the kill. Actually, he did have mech off cooldown. Did not use. Slight mistake from him. There's the hook shot. Great hook shot. Sounds as well. And equals going to get picked off. Great hook coming from uh, Clockwork there. Eight second duration. And that's it. Mega Creeps is done. Navi's going to take it. Um, I'm really surprised. Good game is called, but I'm equal. Some weird play from Navi. Interesting picks, but they were able to carry with a couple um, unusual heroes. Once again, Flaming Lasso interrupted. <laughs> interrupted by the Reality Rift. Shiva's guards on everybody, but still, even still, this damage output is insane. Havos just cleaving through heroes. Goes for a crit next. He's got a Vlad's as well, so a little lifesteal for him, but he's got to run away. Sprint out. Here come the Mega Creeps. Mid Tower taking good damage. Light of Heaven. Still only Aghanim, Shreds, Vanguard. But he has been able to contribute. I, I don't know if uh, Clockwork could have been better replaced by another hero. It's a possibility. But he did make plays sometimes. He did have some nice plays. 
It was kind of an interesting early game, but there's the cogs possibly. There's, yeah, battery assault starting off first. He's going to take some big nukes. Oh, man. He can't even stand up to, uh, can't stand up to Chaos Knight. It's just not possible. Dendy wants to defend it. Defend it. Dendy wants to have some fun. Uh, does he have rapier by any chance? Somebody's going to have a rapier. I just know it. There's a Daedalus. No, it's going to be Daedalus, actually, for who most? A little crit for him, but it, that's it. That's it for game one, guys. Navi versus Naxazy. Navi takes game one. They will be able to get at least one point from today. This is the start of their third match. Uh, we'll have another game coming up in a second for Ghostly League. This Every Ghostly League match is a best of two, also known as a set of two. If you get a win, you get a point. And coming up right after this set, Navi is going to play another set, this time against Shakiro. So that was Navi versus NextKZ. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. My name's Purge. You can go follow me on Facebook or Twitter at Purge Gamers. And, of course, go to my website, PurgeGamers.com. Shout out to our sponsors, Aver Media, as well as Rocket. I am currently using Rocket Gear. It's fantastic. And if you guys want to win some, you can just go bet on Ghost League matches. Whoever gets the most wins ends up winning prizes. That's hardware, headsets, mice, keyboards, awesome, awesome gear from Rocket. And we'll be back in just a second, guys, with game two of Navi versus NextKZ.